Hi, my name is Rajan Mistri and I'm an engineer with Qualcomm Technologies. Today, we're going to take a look at how we can start hacking away on the Dragon Boat 410C without having access to an SDMI monitor. You will find yourself needing this in a lot of scenarios in case you are developing for an IoT application. A lot of IoT applications do not have a screen attached to them. You will need this in that scenario. Or let's say you are part of a hackathon and you don't have enough resources with you. You don't have a HDMI monitor handy. That will give you access to the full features of the Dragon Board. So today we'll make your life a little bit easier and see how we can hack away on the Dragon Board without an HDMI monitor. For this section, what we have in front of us is a Dragon Board 410C. A sensors mezzanine board which can be connected to a variety of sensors, a micro USB cable that connects to the Dragon Board or the sensors mezzanine, a power adapter for the Dragon Board. Now as we all know, the Dragon Board 410C is a 96 ports compliant single board computer that has a 40 pin header that's a low speed expansion header. There are a lot of GPIOs and UART lines that are extended from the Snapdragon 410 e-part to this 40 pin expansion header. The sensor's mezzanine plugs onto this header. So you can see the 40 pin expansion header and these pins plug into the Dragon Boat 410C. For this purpose, we will get access to the Dragon Boat through a UART line. Now, you can find the pinout for this 40 pin low spin expansion header for the Dragon Board on the 96 Ports website. Before actually powering on the Dragon Board, let's go ahead and plug in the sensors mezzanine on the Dragon Board. Before you power on the Dragon Board 410C, please make sure that the 40 pin low spin expansion header, all the pins are properly aligned. We'll go ahead and connect these two ports. You will notice that there are two micro USB connectors on this setup. One is on the sensors mezzanine, the other one is on the Dragon Board itself. To get root access to Dragon Board, we will be connecting to the USB on the sensors mezzanine. Both these micro USB connectors have different functions. Essentially, the mezzanine board is bringing the UART connections from the low speed expansion header and exposing it to U for, for as an interface on the micro USB connection. Once we plug this in, you will notice that the device manager detects a new USB serial port which is COM4 in this case, setup. So now we have access to the Dragon Board through the sensors mezzanine as a UART serial port. Let's go ahead and launch a serial port utility putty. Let's go ahead and select serial as our mode of communication, COM port number four, and let's set the speed as 115200. Let's go ahead and open this COM port. Let's go ahead and enter once. So I just hit the return, carriage return on your keyboard, on your host PC. You can see that we are logged into the Dragon Board port and C as root at Linaro-ALIP. You can go ahead and log in as the Linaro user, which is the default user for the Dragon Board. You can just hit Log in Linaro and enter the password, which is also Linaro. And now you're logged in as Linaro, Linaro user on the Dragon Board 410C. So you now have access to the Linux operating system that is on the Dragon Board 410C. And it's a Debian based system, so it will respond to any of those Linux commands that you type into this terminal. We can also check if this Dragon Board is connected to the network. Let's use a ping command. To see if it's connected. We can do sudo ping 
www.google.com to see if it's connected. You can see that it's a failure. We can also check this simply by using uh, by checking if there is an IP address assigned to this dragon board. So let's do IP space ADDR cache return. And we can see that the Wi Fi module on the dragon board is right now not connected. Let's go ahead and connect this dragon board to a Wi Fi network. We can simply do this by using the nmty command. So we can do sudo nmtui and this will launch a user interface which you can navigate using the arrow keys to connect to the Wi-Fi. Let's navigate to activate a connection, hit carriage return and it will give us the list of all the Wi-Fi networks that are available. Let's go ahead and navigate to the test Wi-Fi network, hit enter and it will ask for a password. So let's go ahead and type in the password. Let's go to OK, navigate to OK and press enter. And you can see that it's connecting to the Wi-Fi network. You can simply navigate using the arrow keys back to activate and then if you do a down arrow key, you can go to back, hit enter and you will come to this main screen again. You can navigate to quit, hit enter again and now you can check if you have network connection. Let's do IP space ADTR and here you can see that this particular dragon board has been assigned an IP address 192.168.43.46. Let's see if we can reach the external word. Let's do the ping command. And you can see it's able to reach an external network. Now you are ready to hack away on the Dragon Boat 410C. Now you have the network connection so you can proceed to update and update your Dragon Board. Get the latest libraries, take a look at the other resources which you have for hacking on the Dragon Board. In case you still don't have access to the external network, in case you are still not connected to Wi-Fi, it might be that the Wi-Fi connection you're trying to connect has an additional click-through step. These are usually found on the airports or cafeterias or in some cases university settings where the Wi-Fi network forces the user to launch a browser and accept the terms of use before you can latch onto that Wi-Fi network and start uh, accessing the internet. In that scenario, you would need to launch the browser on the Dragon Board and accept the term, terms and use of the Wi-Fi network. How can we go about doing this? In the next section, let's take a look at a trick on how we can use the micro USB on the Dragon Board to set up a private network with your host PC and you can launch full applications on the Dragon Board on the host PC. So as mentioned, you will need both the micro USB connections on the mezzanine board as well as the dragon board. The one on the dragon board will be used to set up a private connection with your host PC and one on the mezzanine board will be used to get root access to the dragon board. So using the root access and the mezzanine board, essentially you will be connecting to the Wi-Fi using NMTUI, the same that we saw earlier in the video, whereas using the micro USB and the dragon board and the private network that we have connected and set up, you can actually launch the browser on the dragon board and view it on the host PC. Let's take a look at the steps. You can find these instructions posted on Qualcomm Developer Network under the Dragon Board 410C Getting Started Resource Guide. Once again, you will need a second micro USB cable for this step and you'll be installing a couple of uh, software on the host PC. First step is to use the micro USB cable connected to the mezzanine board and connect to your dragon port and get root access to the dragon port. We saw the steps on how to do that previously in this video. 
Next step is to install a couple of softwares on your host PC. First is the WSL and the second is the XMing, which is an X11 windowing system. Instruction on how to install these software can be found on these links that you see on the screen or you can simply do a Google search on how to install these couple of softwares on your host PC. Next is to start the Ubuntu shell on the host PC and edit the bash RC with the following line. It needs to have export display equal to locust local host 0.0. Now on the terminal that is connected to the dragon board, we need to figure out what the IP address that is assigned to the dragon board by using the command IP ADDR. This way we can find the IP address of the dragon board. Next step is to make sure that X11 forwarding is turned on by checking the slash etc slash ssh sshd config file. It should have the following two lines. It should have X11 forwarding yes and X11 display offset 10. Once these settings are in place, go ahead and reset the dragon board. so that the SSH changes can take effect. Now on your host PC or laptop, start the SSH under bash and log in to the dragon board. You can simply do SSH-X Linaro at the IP address of the dragon board. You can test your X11 server by running a simple program on the dragon board potency. And here are the couple of commands to run that simple command to check if X11 is enabled. Now go ahead and connect the second micro USB cable from your laptop to the Dragon Board. This stops any other USB activity on the Dragon Board. On the PuTTY connection, make the following changes. So on the Dragon Board, using the PuTTY connection of the USB that is connected to the mezzanine board, you will be making these changes to the network interfaces on the Dragon Board. Essentially, you are assigning USB 0 of the Dragon Board, which is the micro USB cable of the, on the Dragon Board, an IP address. That way you can interface with the Dragon Board and set up a private network between the Dragon Board and your host PC. These are the lines that you will need to add to the interfaces file. Next, in the file etc slash resolve.com, add the following line, which is the IP address of the dragon board. Next, run these couple of commands, sudo mod probe gether and sudo dh client usb0 and run the command sudo ifconfig usb0 ip address of the dragon port and then the net mask of the dragon board. ensure that xmin is running on the host pc and start the bash terminal on the bash terminal you can run these couple of commands ssh minus x linaro at the ip address of the dragon board log on to the dragon board use an mti tui to connect to the wi-fi router and then you can launch chromium on the dragon board and view the chromium that is launched on the dragon board on the host pc to click through any of those terms of use that are required for the wi-fi Let's go ahead and do these final two steps just to see what the end result would look like. So in this case, let's go ahead and first make sure that X11 Xming is running on the host PC. So I'm just going to do a quick search on Xming. And you can see Xming desktop app is installed on my host PC. I'm just going to right click run as admin. It's going to ask me if I want to run this PC. 
and I just click OK. Next, I launch Bash. I'm going to quickly search for Bash. And you can see Bash on Ubuntu for Windows is also installed on my PC. I'm going to go ahead and run that. Now, in Bash, I'm going to type in the command ssh-x linaro at the IP address of the Dragon Board. Hit enter. And it's asking me for a password. And I can do linaro, it's the password of that user. And I can see I am now logged into the Dragon Board. Now, all I need to do is launch the Chromium browser on the Dragon Board. For that, I will simply type Chromium and, and hit Carriage Return. You can see that the new Chromium browser just got launched. This is actually a browser that is launched on the Dragon Board that you can visualize on your host PC. Now, if you connect to the Wi-Fi and it has a click-through terms of use for you then you can visualize that here you can accept the terms of use and you and the dragon board would be ready to connect to the Wi-Fi network and access the internet and that's how you would get access to the dragon board 410c and connect to Wi-Fi without having access to an SDMI monitor for additional resources like getting started guides tutorials videos and more please visit Qualcomm Developer Network.